Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very special episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's stories. The first of which has to do with Hiko. For all you North American fans out there, it seems likely Hiko will return to the competitive CSGO scene sometime very shortly in the future. And he's actually going to be trying to make his own CSGO roster. He's actually trying to choose his own players he wants to play with. And sometime soon, he will be returning to an organization, but we just don't know what organization it's going to be. As of right now, he's already compiled a list of players he wants to play with. And he's actually already started the roster himself with, of course, him being on that roster. And apparently, according to Hiko, one organization in the North American scene has already offered his team. It just seems likely going forward as well. It's just a matter of time for Hiko to choose the right team and the right offer for his roster. So here's Hiko confirming himself, guys, of his next CSGO team, which he himself is making from scratch. Are you still looking to get back into the pro scene? I miss seeing you play. Yes. As I said a little bit ago, um, I have something I'm working on right now. I have a few guys in mind. I'm actually already in the process of like shopping it to orgs, so we'll see what happens. We'll see. I already have an offer, which is very good. Um, so yeah, now it's still just like finding the best offer and deciding where we want to go. But and I know you guys hate when I make speculation, but one of these offers that Hiko has already offered or actually received for his team and roster going forward could potentially be Evil Geniuses. Now, many of you guys know I've talked about this multiple times on my channel, but the CEO of Evil Geniuses ever since been trying to get back into CSGO, and it was with Hiko's initial roster way back in the day before MLG Aspen. Hiko was actually playing with the iBuy Power members when their team actually found out they were going to be banned. He was playing with those guys and found out before MLG Aspen the team was going to get banned, and so their offer, they were playing under the name at that time Wicked Masterminds, a synonym to Evil Geniuses. So people thought that roster was eventually going to be signed by EG and that offer after the ban fell through. So kind of a loose connection there. It could certainly be Evil Geniuses who offered Hiko and his team going forward. We're going to find out hopefully within the coming weeks. But on top of that, talking about Evil Geniuses guys, their actual CEO, I'll link the tweet on screen for all of you guys. He actually was at Dallas, uh, Dallas, Texas for the ESL Pro League Finals a couple weeks ago asking pros for advice on pro teams going forward. So that's going to be really cool to see if that was the team that actually offered Hiko. But even if they didn't, if they actually get back into CSGO, it would be cool to see Evil Geniuses back with a team. Now on top of that, talking about that ex I Buy Power team, talking about Dazed, he actually came out on stream the other day. He was doing an AMA through Reddit, and he talked about the ESL ban coming for match fixers, or the unban that is. Now me and you guys know, uh, several, several weeks ago, we had ESL unban the VAC ban players. So after two years of playing with the VAC ban, you can now come back to ESL events. ESL then talked about maybe extending that rule to match fixers. Of course, Valve has no statement on VACBAN players or match fixers yet, but ESL did unban VACBAN players, and it seems very likely before this meeting actually happened, the meeting, I'll link the tweet on screen for all of you guys, um, ESL made sure to make it clear they're going to have a bunch of pro players all convene in one spot and talk about potentially spreading this rule to actually unban match fixers for ESL events. So going forward, it seemed before the actual meetings took place, pro players wanted I buy power players back at ESL events, and it seems very likely after hearing what Dazed had to say as well that iBet Power members and match fixtures in general could be coming back to ESL events sometime soon. And there's a lot of people talking about this tweet saying, hey, what does it mean, blah, blah, blah. And basically, uh, I don't really think this is privileged information. I don't think this is that big of a deal saying it. So I am going to say what happened, at least regarding me, so that you guys kind of know where I am at in my you know, career and life right now. Uh, they had two player-only meetings and... Obviously, they discussed a lot of things, but the things relevant to me that were discussed is match fixing players. Should they be in band and us specifically? I think they only mentioned us, actually. I'm not 100 percent sure how it went, but both meetings, they asked all the players and unanimously both times they, you know, all the players said that we should be in band. So I don't really know what the timetable is for this. I don't even know if it's going to happen, but I don't know why they would have the meeting if they're not going to unbanish, right? It, it just... And continuing on very briefly with North American news, guys, our last North American story of the day, I do want to talk about Peacemaker being dropped from Team Misfits. It's going to probably be one of the lengthier stories, actually, now that, I now that I've said it. I want to talk about this for a couple minutes, so time markers are down below, guys. Peacemaker, as of yesterday, was kicked from Team Misfits' roster. The events leading up to that were the American Minor, where Team Misfits did get dead last. They lost, of the eight teams on screen, for all of you guys, they lost to Pain Gaming and for contention to actually place top four. Pain Gaming swept these guys two 
duo. And I really do want to say that Misfits did have two stand-in players. Sean Gears was gone for his own wedding as well as Shazam was benched from the organization. Apparently an organizational move. Some people think it was Peacemaker who benched Shazam, their main opera. So the team Misfits probably likely to get top four at the American Minor. They never really in contention to actually go to the major qualifier, but they did get dead last instead with two stand-in players, albeit. But I do want to touch on the fact that Peacemaker, many people out there on the forums have said that Peacemaker now is, is seen as an overrated coach, where as in two to three months ago, people thought he was one of the better coaches in the North American scene of all time, as well as in the Brazilian scene too. Now, to overlay the events for you guys, besides the fact they did bad at the American Minor, they have not had too much success for Team Misfits, although a little bit of a hype team coming up out of nowhere with that newer roster. I want to touch on the fact that Peacemaker, you know, a year ago from today, was actually still seen as an amazing coach. He spent six months with Games Academy, who eventually became Tempo Storm. That's the current SK Gaming roster, minus, you know, of course, the, the FNX trade there. But besides that, an amazing team he actually brought up out of the Brazilian scene. They eventually sold out. He went over to Team Liquid then. Team Liquid saw success with him as well for five months straight. He had Elige, Hiko, and Simple. People on the forum saying that it was, of course, Elige and Simple who carried that team. But either way, he was the coach in the current time when they got second at ESL Cologne back in 2016. They actually, the all North American final, and one of the better events I've ever seen in my life. It was actually Team Liquid versus SK Gaming. It was kind of a, a rough beat down there, but still, nonetheless, they did make the grand finals there. And here's where we actually the downfall of Peacemaker and the downfall of most coaches out there. We see nowadays very few teams out there who have stable coaches who are very well known for what they do. You have Immortals and Astralis as coach. Besides that, many teams out there are seen as a nuisance and not a necessity where they really can't afford coaches because with the new IGL rules that came into effect six to nine months ago, around the same time we saw Peacemaker on a decline, the fact is coaches can now only talk during timeouts. They can't IGL like he once was. And that was definitely one of his great benefits to teams, the fact that he could IGL and them during the entire game was one of his big benefits. Ever since that coaching rule change happened, he spent just 21 days, just three weeks with Team NRG. He tried to make the roster a North American majority. They didn't like that. They kicked him out or he left that roster itself. And now less than two months later with Team Misfits, less than two months with that team, he has now been kicked from their roster as well. Going forward, it does not seem like there's much light at the end of the tunnel for Peacemaker or any coaches out there right now who are trying to be hired, especially with a record like Peacemaker. After his last two stints with NRG and Misfits, it's seems very unfortunate the guy's getting a bad rep. I seriously think he's one of the better coaches out there. If only the coaching rule has never changed. An update to the situation announced this morning by the owner of Misfits. Yes, it is Peacemaker who's been off the main roster. He's no longer the head coach, but he'll still be contracted out by the team. He'll still be being paid by them as a strategic coach and an analyst. So his, his position has definitely been stepped down a notch there, and Shazam has also returned. So kind of an ultimate slap in the face there, guys, as Peacemaker is still part of the organization as a strategic coach, not the head coach, and Shazam is now back in the starting line up and ZQK, their stand-in player, as well as Relics are now out and Sean Gares is back in the starting five as well. So for Misfits future, who knows what lies. And finally, in European news, for all you other fans out there, with the European minor starting tomorrow, going to be very competitive as well between these eight teams on screen. I am so excited to watch this because for the European side of things, apart from the CIS, American, and Asian region, for the Europe side of things, we take three qualifiers through, which means for the first time that we've seen through, through far, uh, so far throughout the minors, the third place match actually matters, which means uh, the winner's final winner will actually go through the loser's final winner will go through and the two teams competing for the third place match the winner of that matchup will also go through to the major qualifier on top of this though for group a you guys see fanatic academy in that group that is a stacked group of people we have envious alongside kingwin on top of that though guys even worse for them team big coming off some big wins for them fanatic academy has their work cut out for them if they do win this actual minor and at this minor itself they will actually be known as team ballistics they announced that many of you guys know the esl ruling for organizations with an academy roster. They have to have separate organizational names. If they do make it to the major qualifiers somehow on a miracle, they will continue on as Team Ballistics. So Group A is certainly stacked alongside Group B. I think Group B, people like Penta, really has it set out for themselves to at least try and make it to a top four finish here and have a chance, if not winning the loser's bracket final, to at least have a chance in a third place match with teams like Dignitas, who have lost Mike Lilly, iGame.com, and LDLC, who have had terrible last months here. I really think Penta has a great chance to get a Group B there and solidify a spot for themselves as well. So going forward, of those eight teams, my guess is for all of you guys, Envious is the number one pick alongside Penta. The rest of the teams there, though, really a big toss-up. And also in Swedish Shuffle News, a ton of you guys have been commenting down below that yes, Freiburg has left NIP. I know that. If you guys did not know that uh, beforehand, I actually watched my video three days ago about the Swedish Shuffle. I did predict that happening along with some other changes. In about a week's time, guys, I'm going to make another update video on that situation as a part of CSK News as to what more trades are going to happen in the future. So I did predict Freiburg 
Ruby leaving. He was replaced by Epsilon Rez. Rez now joins his former teammate Draken on NIP. So going forward as well, it does seem Epsilon has actually solidified their five-man lineup, which kind of worried a few of you guys who actually watched my Swedish Shovel video. In that video, I did say that Snyder could perhaps go down to Epsilon after being kicked from Godsent. Now, that did not obviously happen as Epsilon did solidify their full five-man lineup. They will the UK member Smuya joined up by Freddie B and Barbar, their two, their two current members. And alongside that, Maeve and Cosmine will round out their five-man lineup, which means that Snyder will not go down there. Now, if you guys actually listen to my video very specifically, I said that the Snyder going from Godsent, he still will be kicked from Godsent. I'm very, very certain about him being kicked from Godsent, but obviously now he will not be going down to Epsilon as they've solidified their full five-man roster. So I said that was one of the least likely things to happen, so it wasn't actually confirmed, but everything else I said in that video should still be happening. As well as on top of that, guys, even more important news, we had Intel and ESL join up and announce the Intel Grand Slam, which means pretty much a 10-event program. Uh, any any event partnered by ESL and Intel, which is $200,000 plus, will go to this 10-man program or 10-tournament program, and pretty much the gist of it to summarize for all of you guys, I'll post screenshots on screen. The first team to actually win four of the 10 events will be, will be actually given a prize of $1 million on top of what they've already earned. Now, also another rule there is if a team has three wins, let's say SK Gaming has three wins of the 10 series so far, uh, no matter where in the series they are, if some team in a grand finale of a $200,000 plus tournament actually stops them from getting their fourth win, that team who actually beats them will also receive $100,000 to their total. So kind of a cool system there, guys. And then once we name one champion, the whole thing resets. So for all of you who are worried about not having crowdfunding, not having enough money out there in the CSGO scene, this certainly helps that thanks to Intel and ESL with a new Grand Slam event. So it'll be really cool to see if a team actually can win four of the 10 of events. We've seen in the past, you know, we've had a few dominant teams out there, but certainly winning four of 10 events is not going to be an easy thing to do. And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSGO News. This is one of those episodes where I was really confused about it because I started recording last night and I was doing a terrible job talking slowly. So I want all of you guys who are still watching right now, I need to know who you guys are, the loyal fans and viewers out there. Please, if you guys are still watching right now, please comment down below, tuna fish sandwich, and I'll reply to all those comments that have that in it. So thank you guys all so much for watching, especially for the great support through my OP Skins affiliate code. I'm now making more through OP Skins affiliate codes than I do make through YouTube revenue, and that's the only stream of income I actually have right now. So thank you all so much for using my code. I really do appreciate that. I will see you guys all tomorrow with some more CSGO news, and if not, with a Q&A video with myself. So please leave a comment down below with a question as well if you guys have any questions for me. As always, live, love, laugh a lot. Remember, I like you. I will see you guys all next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye. He said he got the quad. Killing the ace. What is this?